Next presentation will be by Mike Catalano. He is the Senior Technical Sales Analyst Associate with Geonix Limited. Basically, this is a new type of soil mapping. And uh, I think he's coming up. Uh, he was in the back. There he is. So uh, we'll welcome Mike to the stage. I'll start off with a warning, I guess. Um, I really like to use my hands. So for the guy with the camera, I noticed walking around might have been an issue, but I'm not going to move, but my hands will. So keep, a, keep an eye on them. Uh, actually, with that, another warning. Um, not, I don't spend a lot of time in, in, in this industry um, with the farming community. But it occurred to me, I was talking to another gentleman earlier today, that well, my grandfather came here from Sicily, and uh, he was a farmer. <laughs> so I have that connection, and the fast-moving hands, so they go together. Um, I was uh, really honored to be invited to, to speak uh, here. Um, I, I, I saw that um, uh, the community uh, hadn't had an opportunity to maybe have um, some, someone from our company really uh, speak to a general audience about what our equipment can do. Um, that brings us to the third warning, I've given you two. Uh, I really don't like doing these things as sales pitches, I like to do it more as, a, as an instructive thing. So do my best, but that's part of the reason why I was uh, invited here, was really to share some information on a product that is, has, been starting, has been starting to be used a little more regularly um, in Canada, has been used for quite some time um, in, in, in the US and the rest of the world. Only now, in the last few years, has it seen a wider spread use here in Canada. And uh, I hope to basically introduce you um, to the usefulness of this instrument that we make um, and the general instruments that we make which measure soil conductivity. Now our instruments all uh, use um, electromagnetic induction principles for the measurement of soil conductivity um, and it's, it's, it's a technique that's very quick and easy and efficient to use, um, does, not require, does not require any ground contact, um, so there's many benefits that go along with that. Um, the thing I usually like to point out is that this is not something um, new to, well, to the whole process. It's new to this industry, um, but not new for us. We've been in business for 50 years making this equipment, and really we were involved mostly uh, in, the, in the early years, in the 60s um, through the 70s, mostly exploration. Uh, in the mining industry, uh, groundwater exploration, um, looking for ore deposits, minerals. Um, and I, I will basically show you some of that historical uh, equipment. But the, the technique and the technology that was first formulated back 50 years ago is essentially um, what you see in the current instrument that's used called the EM38, um, soil conductivity. That's what the main instrument used by this group looks like. Um, plain and simple. We'll start off with the simple stuff. What does it map? Well, some quick basics. Crop yield, soluble salts, nitrates, soil moisture, topsoil depth, organics, soil textural, clay uh, being one of the bigger ones, and magnetic susceptibility. Now, I will, no, obviously none of these things are truly mapped directly, which we do get these questions regularly. The only thing the instrument can actually measure is the soil conductivity uh, uh, of the earth, okay? And really all these other things are um, factors in, you know, interpreting out what that measurement means at a particular field, under particular circumstances. So it means different things in different parts of the world in different fields. We'll go into more detail. 
As I promised, here's some uh, historical images of what we've done in the past, and they're all electro electromagnetic induction instruments. We've been involved with uh, building things that are used on airplanes and hel excuse me, helicopters. Um, and uh, it's not by accident that all these pictures are black and white. I'm trying to make a point there. Um, again, the technology and all the original patents, we are the um, only company in the world that had the exclusive rights to make in this type of equipment. This was the very first instrument that we ever developed. And some of you that are familiar with uh, what some of our older EM38 looked like, gee, doesn't look too different. <laughs> this original instrument though was used for uh, mapping ore deposits uh, shallow to the earth and this essentially simply um, uh, being used to, with, with a needle on it just to detect changes in the soil, whether it, it was uh, uh, more conductive due to um, uh, uh, extra field lines coming back from an, um, an ore. Um, last year we actually had the, that instrument retired and um, um, it's housed in the Canadian Agricultural Museum. As I said, the old looks just like the new. I certainly want to take the opportunity to at least uh, explain some of the physics behind how the equipment works. So the first thing is, of course, all of our equipment um, is based on uh, the principle of electromagnetic induction, which involves using uh, coils, uh, having a transmitter coil and a receiver coil. Transmitter basically energized and current flowing in that um, uh, coil produces an electromagnetic field which travels through the air, the ground, the soil, um, and when it's in the presence of another conductor, you now have current flowing in that conductor, which strength of which is dependent on the conductivity of that material or conductor, producing its own field, which is of course detected on the surface, uh, and the equipment can tell you how conductive that material that the field came from was. Um, having said that, I have um, some wonderful schematics that will make it a lot easier to understand that. But first, um, the two principles that govern, um, and I, uh, some of these slides I've used for other um, applications, so I'll go through some things a little quicker than others. But the basics here is there's two main laws in physics that govern all of the operation of our equipment. There's Faraday's law and Amp's law, essentially um, saying that and from the equations you, you can tell, if you have a changing magnetic field, that will generate a current. And that's Faraday's law. At the same time, Amp's law says sort of the opposite, where uh, a current will produce a magnetic field. And these two things working together are how our equipment is used throughout n without any ground contact to basically tell you how conductive the uh, soil is. Um, your thumb, and this is just so that you can follow with the next couple slides, typically in physics when we talk about creating EM fields, um, you, you point your thumb in the direction of flow of current and then your fingers uh, will flow in the direction of the electromagnetic field. Um, the field produced by the coils in our instruments are called dipole fields and to visualize that essentially just think of the Earth's magnetic field, North Pole, South Pole, with the fields going from the North Pole to the South Pole. Okay. Really here there's a couple of animations that um, help uh, understand those two principles, uh, Faraday's Law and Amp's Law, where, and you'll notice on the top Faraday's Law, the voltmeter does not deflect until the, mag the magnet actually is moving through the coils. So a moving magnetic field induces a current to flow. Important. In the bottom, you see that the thumb is pointing in the direction of current flow. You've got the blue curling lines, which would be the electromagnetic field. Okay, and this principle now is going to be carried over into the ground. So here, you see a schematic of the instrument. On one end, we basically have a transmitter coil, which we control how much current is flowing through that. On the opposite end, we have a receiver coil, which measures essentially a voltage. Well, the current that we pump and send through the coil uh, travels in, in a circular loop, of course, because it's a coil. Now, when you place uh, current into a loop, 
that's when you produce the dipole magnetic field, which is much like the Earth's magnetic field. So that's, if you see there, you have a cross section of the field, right? North pole, south pole, transmitter with the magnetic field lines traveling in three dimensional space, all directions. Those field lines travel into the ground. The soil is a relatively good conductor, as many of you already know. We take advantage of that. The soil now acts like a wire. So the field lines, as they cross through the soil, now depending on how conductive that soil is, those field lines now will generate small currents to flow in the soil, which we call eddy currents. Depending on the strength of those currents, those currents now that are in the soil are producing their own magnetic field. We call that a secondary magnetic field. It's that field that is measured directly by the receiver coil or coils, if there's more than one, on, on the surface by the equipment. So we, in, we control how much current goes into the coil, produces a field. The field is traveling through the earth. Now you have a stronger or weaker conductive earth producing a stronger, weaker magnetic field. That field is inducing a voltage which is weaker, stronger, directly dependent and proportional to um, the soil conductivity. Now, um, with the equipment, we refer to, um, th there's actually two components you can measure with any electromagnetic uh, device. Uh, it's usually referred to as quadrature component and in-phase component. Um, and with, with many of the other equipment that we do make, it's important because they're used for other applications, which it enhances response to metal targets. Um, like a whole, we have a whole other line of equipment that's used by military for locating unexploded bombs. Um, if any of you are familiar with the uh, uh, current uh, history channel and the, this show called The Bomb Hunters, um, they basically are using our equipment. Um, and so uh, the application of conductivity when it comes to the farming community, of course, you're mainly concerned with conductivity, although I've, had, I've heard of some people starting to be a little more interested in what magnetic susceptibility can tell. Here's just a quick list of uh, different models of ground conductivity meters that we do make. There's the EM31, MK2, EM31, 38s. Now the EM38, which as I've been sort of saying is uh, the one instrument used mostly by this industry, uh, that's because it handles the depth requirements for most farming applications, which is about a meter and a half. Um, if, if it were that there was um, more depth required, we do have other equipment, other conductivity meters that do go deeper. Uh, but typically that's not the case, and so that's how the EM38 has sort of been become, the, uh, become synonymous with the equipment that's used. Um, the current model is officially called the M38, MK2, or Mark II. Uh, it's been around for about three or four years now. And we'll go into more detail as we move along there. Um, so, of course, you're wondering the important things. And, well, we talked about these field lines and creating current, but what's controlling that in the ground? That's the things that are important to you. Well, uh, the factors that, that do affect uh, conductivity in the soil being, of course, porosity, the shape, size of the pores, you know, how many there are uh, in, in terms of connecting passages through the material, uh, how much water is infilled in, in, on the molecular scale, you know, the moisture content, concentration of dissolved electrolytes, basically salinity, uh, temperature is important, uh, how much clay is present in the, in the, um, in the soil, um, the presence, of course, of conductive, other conductive uh, minerals as well. Uh, and uh, one that's not on there that I just noticed, compaction. So there, of course, uh, just a quick schematic showing, you know, you have the particles being the insulators and then moisture becomes the, the key factor along with the clay producing um, those pathways for the electrons to move along and for those electromagnetic fields to generate the current that flows through the soil. Once again, conductivity. Um, the instrument output is conductivity in millisiemens per meter, millimoles per meter, which uh, is in a direct uh, relationship with, with uh, resistive units that maybe uh, are more, more used in the industry, ohm meters. Just quick conversion there. Okay, depth control with the equipment. So uh, what are the different ways you can control depth? Well, with the recent, the old models of EM38, we always had two coils, just the one meter separation, transmitter, receiver. Uh, the latest model, we added a, a second receiver coil at half meters to provide two depths um, 
that could be collected in one pass. You could have actually collected information with old instruments at two depths, but you would require having to either do two passes or use a special instrument with coils rotated in different orientations. But the newest model has everything built into it, multiple coils so that you don't have to do any rotations. You just uh, use the instrument in one, in one orientation and have all your information. So. Uh, changing the coil's distance affects how deep you go, number one. Uh, you can change the dipole configuration. Dipole configuration just means the coils are either in their plane, right, like that, or like bicycle tires. Um, that being the vertical dipole mode, like a circular coil, the way the table, around the outside of the tables, or if the table was on its side, standing uh, up, it would be, that would be the horizontal dipole mode. Um, and then the thirdly is changing frequencies. These are all the different ways that using uh, these techniques you can change the depth. Now, when using the equipment in either the vertical or horizontal, and you can see the instrument laying vertical VDM and HDM horizontal dipole mode, um, what the distribution is under the ground of what you're measuring. Now, when you're measuring under the ground with the equipment, it, it's not some linear straight line. It's basically based on these two functions, which I'm not going to go into great detail today. Um, but the shaded regions show you the proportion of the ground below the instrument that you're actually measuring, where the majority of the reading would be coming from. The whole reading comes from the entire shaded area as a number. It's just a number. This is the conductivity over this volume of Earth to that depth, but based on this response function. So in the vertical dipole mode, it's the one to the left, uh, horizontal dipole mode, the one to the right. As you can see, the vertical dipole mode has more of a bell curve effect to it with a peak at about half uh, coil separation down, whereas the horizontal dipole mode uh, it has this greatest region of influence immediately below the, the equipment. And that becomes important when you're interested in different regions of the subsurface. There's a wonderful new model again. It's not a sales pitch. Uh, and here's a schematic showing you the, that would be the vertical dipole mode. You can see the transmitter to receiver coils. There were separations, that the coils on their sides, that's a horizontal dipole mode. So even though this instrument has extra set of coils to achieve the uh, two depths that most of you uh, use, um, you can still rotate the instrument into a horizontal dipole mode, achieving even shallower information. This is one of those other instruments I mentioned, other ground conductivity meter, an EM31, um, which is uh, used for measuring to depths of about six meters. The coils are on the ends of the tubes. There's a short version of the same one. Um, this is a multi-coil system that's towed. That was used on levee systems. Here, EM34 with spacings of 10, 20, and 40 meters will take you down to as far as 60 meters. That's really not a big depth. We have equipment that will go down to two kilometers uh, in the exploration side of things. Of course, you're using very large loops of wire and generators to generate um, signal. So, back to what we're all here for, EM38. Uh, and we'll, we'll go into it in a little more depth. Here are some of the various models of so the old system. It's not a sales pitch. So the new 38 Mark II basically has uh, many of the features of these older models. From the old model, we developed different ways of measuring a few other things. You'll see we had to combine two units together and synchronize them for different depths, measuring the two components I, uh, I mentioned, conductivity and magnetic susceptibility, was built into one instrument. But with the new model, we basically incorporated all these things into one and we added um, as we found that, you know, this industry is probably the widest um, user of the equipment, we started to incorporate a lot of the things that we were learning from, from the farming community. So we've added things like temperature compensation, which is built right into the system. There's Bluetooth um, uh, chip inside the unit for wireless communication. Um, you can still collect data through a serial connection um, in your towed array systems. Uh, the unit also comes with a um, automatic calibration stand. Um, that is one thing you do have to do with uh, EM uh, inductive uh, systems. Um, you do have to zero them prior to use, which is something that takes about a minute or two. 
the new unit also has um, uh, various uh, 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 power, power options, direct input, rechargeable batteries. The logging software that's standard, uh, we offer a certain package from Geonix, um, and, and that's more to cover across all applications with users that we have in, let's say, the archaeological side of things, environmental studies, geotechnical. But a lot of our current users in the farming community you know, like to use products they already are familiar with and have, so we have, um, I don't want to say teamed up, but uh, we've, we've communicated and um, um, several third-party software people have added uh, data collection to, um, to, the, to these units. And so those being uh, Ag Leader, uh, FarmWorks is uh, another one. You can use an uh, iPhone, iPad, it's very flexible in terms of your data. Basically, you're, you're, you're collecting numbers. SST management software can be used. Here are some uh, sleds and towed, towed systems. Um, basically, things to look out for when, when using trailer-mounted systems is the distance behind what you're towing with. Um, the picture in the middle is the protective housing that we do offer for customers now. Um, we do not get involved with building the sleds and trailers, but um, we'll certainly offer advice. But the unit in the middle pr provides protection to the instrument and can be easily mounted on the various other uh, systems. Just some other pictures. Am I doing on time? So, parent conductivity of soils increases with water content. Clay content and salt. So the big ones. I'm just going to go through a series of uh, some nice images, some wonderful color. I won't go into great detail, but at least showing you some examples of how the conductivity relates to these other properties. So salinity. You know, basically breaking down the field. Um, here we have where two instruments, uh, an EM38 was used along with the EM31, which is the long white boom, which goes deeper. And you can see that you can, you know, of course, the conductivity measured at the shallow reaches of the EM38, much different than the deeper going um, EM31. Uh, another salinity map from Australia. Um, typical, um, uh, we're always asking, you know, what's a good um, swath distance? The equipment has a footprint of about a meter in diameter around it. But depending on the resolution of what you're after, of course, that's what controls what your line-to-line -line distance or spacing should be. So as long as you're going down your lines and collecting continuous, the instrument's capable of collecting up to like 20 readings per second, so it's all based on speed. Um, distances typically, though, are some on the range of about 50 feet or so, but you can certainly go greater than that if you're looking for uh, larger scale features. Um, some more maps. Uh, looking at uh, drainage patterns and how they correlate. Now, a general picture that I like to emphasize here, throughout here, is you're starting to see that essentially the tool in measuring conductivity is breaking down the field, regardless of the knowledge you have, into zones for you. And that's really how this all started. I mean, yes, conductivity, you know, where are the variations in conductivity? Well, we have several factors that relate to why the conductivity changes in the soil. I'm not an expert on the side of, well, what, how that leads to changes in, in you know, the crop's uh, yield potential and the various uh, effects it has on different crops. But um, the most important part is there is a change. There's something. And it's an easy and quick way to do it. And then go back out with your, you know, direct sampling. Um, uh, some, some applications related to moisture. We do a lot in the turf grass industry side of things. Here you're looking at a simple f uh, one hole on a golf course where um, you're correlating conductivity to uh, moisture changes due to elevation. Um, compaction. You know, we, there's uh, certain companies that will map, um, uh, in the UK there's a company that does a lot of uh, racehorse track uh, mapping, they do stadiums uh, to show where compaction and uh, you can tell either where, where players or, or uh, people come out onto the field, spend more time and so certain things need to be done. 
or can be implemented to change that, all based on one pass of uh, conductivity. Um, here you have conductivity relating to yield uh, specific to a barley field. You look at those two images, you don't have to know much to know that they look pretty similar. Um, you know, what that leads you to do though is up to you or the soil scientist. Um, same thing with uh, water content and, and showing how conductivity is relating to, uh, to the crop yield in this case. I mean, again, you don't have to have you know, a trained eye to know that those two maps look almost identical in terms of zones and regional breakdown. Um, but that, that's up to the user what you want to do with it, which one's faster to collect. I mean, at the end of the day, it's just uh, soil conductivity is just another tool, and our electromagnetic induction system provides you with an efficient, faster way um, to break down and create the zones that you need, you know, to further service uh, your fields. So, finally, I guess EM conductivity allows you to do it any time of year. No ground contact, very low power, it's lightweight. Uh, yes, we don't provide you with a sled or trailer, but that's probably the least uh, uh, of the issues the way we look at it. Um, it's obviously low maintenance, you've got no moving parts. And it does work well with a lot of the existing precision ag software that's out there. So uh, with that, I believe that's my last slide. It was. Uh, a little lighthearted, okay. Are there any questions? Nobody? Come on, somebody, somebody. Yep. Sorry? I, I thought I said I can't turn this into a sales thing. <laughs> Am I allowed to answer that? <laughs> yeah, it's um, 16,700, I think, the instrument itself. There really aren't many options with it, but even with all the options, it's under 20,000 Canadian. Anything else? A little more scientific? <laughs> uh, if a lot of you didn't hear the question, I'm going to try to, I think, you, you're asking if we're uh, looking at creating some sort of software that can help pull out the other information out of the conductivity to help farmers. And uh, The quick answer is not really. We are really involved in so many other areas, that, but there are, the answer is there are people doing that, and it's a matter of either coming to see me or speaking to others that, like your um, ag coach uh, people, they, they, most of them now are informed on the topic, and there, there, there's a lot of work being done in this industry on the side of uh, soil conductivity. Um, so there are some existing software packages that people just don't know about, just like people didn't know that we even existed. Everybody knows Averis exists, but not everybody knew that, you know, Geonix has this soil conductivity. It's the same thing. It's just information and getting out there. And so, well, this is one start, so. I hope that answers your question. It does exist. I can give you some details if you... Any other? Okay. Well, with that, I'd like to uh, thank Mike. Uh, this, this conference is about leading edge technology and uh, getting people to look outside the box. So this definitely gives us something to look at. So thanks, Mike. Thank you. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you.